What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Sheep Kiss Sheared Podcast, home of people, politics, and popular culture. I'm your host, the one and only Austin Creed, and welcome into the morning show. So, um, my friends, if my voice sounds different this morning, uh, it's because I'm sick, and that's part of the reason why I didn't do a show last night, because my voice is kind of out of it, and, um, yeah, we're just only gonna make this work, though. So, my friends, I wanted to talk this morning about why you get distracted. And the morning show has become a staple of my day because I get to impart motivation and inspire you. Because I had to do I do this for myself every morning, regardless of whether I would record it or not record it. So I figured I might as well. So why you get distracted? So on our journey is to become the best version of ourselves it's really easy if you picture it like this picture yourself on a road and you're walking down this road and at the you can kind of see the very end of the road on the horizon it seems just in reach but also just out of reach and as you're walking down this road there are little side trails and little booths along the way that are that serve to distract you that are constantly beckoning for your attention constantly wanting you to stop by it taste their wares see what they have to give you or what they have to provide for you and sometimes you just take a little you know slight detour but other times you might find yourself going on an entirely different trail and you have to find your way back to the original path that you were on This is what it means to be distracted, for most people anyway. Today we're going to discuss how to avoid distraction, and if you happen to find yourself distracted, how you can use it to your advantage. And the best example is honestly this show this morning for me. I'll be honest with y'all, as an artist I find myself sometimes starved, my soul is starving for material and when I say that I don't I'm not trying to use it as an excuse I'm trying to explain to you how my brain works and something I've discovered over the last couple months of me doing the show me writing my first book working on my second book a lot of it all comes down to finding the balance between productivity and creativity The problem is, just like the dichotomy between the spirit and the flesh, it's extremely difficult to find that pair, find that equal footing for both, find where the lines intersect on the graph. And this is where you get distracted because it's easy to fluctuate between one extreme or another extreme or a little too much of this, a little too much of that. You know, it's tough sometimes to find that balance. And I admit, I have been finding myself getting distracted recently quite a bit. Mainly with women because I'm still in college. And, you know, the girls don't hate me. So I get distracted by it. I'm just being honest with y'all on the show this morning. Now, does that make me vindicated? No, it just means I'm aware of my weakness. And if you're not aware of your weakness, it's no wonder that it's exploiting you. If you know that there's a ch- you know a little spot in your armor where the plates don't overlap, you need to make sure that the enemy doesn't stab you there. The reason you're getting distracted this morning is, number one, you don't know you're distracted. Two, you're not willing to sacrifice that distraction. That one is extremely key. Sometimes you might even know what you're weak to. But if you're not willing to say, hey, you know what? I need to control this. Whether it's I limit it to a certain amount of time or a certain period of time in my day. Or maybe I need to get rid of it entirely if I just cannot find a way to keep it in moderation. That's extremely key. If you can do that, you can't be surprised when it starts to run your life off the rails on the side trails. 
This is why you're getting distracted. And the, you know, the saddest part is number three though. Number three is you don't have a clearly defined goal in the first place. It's really easy to get distracted if you don't even know where you're going in the first place. And unfortunately, I see this all too often with the young guys around my campus. I'll talk with them and be like, hey man, what are you doing with your life? What's your major? Where are you trying to go? Do you know what you want to do? And a lot of people, they'll have a, maybe a general idea if that, but they won't have a clearly defined path of I'm getting this degree so I can go to maybe this master's program or this PhD program, or I want to immediately get my bachelor's and go out and work at this company, have this role. People do not have that lined out. They do not understand that it's crucial to have that. If you're trying to play darts and you don't aim for a spot on the board, you can't get mad if you don't get a bullseye. You can't get mad if you don't get the score that you want. It's the same thing in life. You can't get upset in your life that you're not making millions of dollars, that you're not highly respected, and that you haven't seen your life become what you want if you don't even know what it is that you want in the first place. You can't just say, oh, I want to be rich. That's not a goal. That's the start of a goal. Okay, you want to be rich. Okay, well, what jobs are what jobs make a lot of money? Okay, well, those this job makes a lot of money. Well, do I want to do that? No. Okay, well, then back to the drawing board. You see how this works? I know what I want to do. I want to continue to make this show better and better and better. I love being a talk show host. I love writing books. That's why I do it. But what do you love to do? What is it you're passionate about? Because you can't set up what it is you're passionate about, what it is you like to do. Then you can't be shocked that you're not getting it. Because that just makes, doesn't make any sense. I would challenge you this morning that if you do not have a clearly defined goal, you need to set that up today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, today. Because once you set that up, you will set yourself up to walk on a main path. You will set yourself up on the path of righteousness. The path that is, le that is least trodden, not most trodden. Path most trodden is the wide path and it leads to destruction. The narrow path is tough, rocky, but it will lead you to paradise. I'm a big believer on controlling your vices. Let's say you have a clearly defined goal this morning, or let's say that you took my advice and you decided, hey, you know what? I need to define my goals. I need to define what path I want to be on. All right, good. So then what did you what do you do now? Well, here's what you do next. You need to decide whether you want to stay the same or get better. What do I mean by that? I mean you need to start examining yourself. What is it that you are weak to? What is it that is a time suck for you? What is it that you do that wastes your time, wastes your energy, and can rob you of potential progress? If you don't know what those things are, you need to figure them out now. Because if you do not, they will continue to act like a leech on your back. But instead of taking your blood, it will take your potential. It will take your future it will take you longer to get there it will suck away your progress that you could have made mine for example i need to keep myself under control when it comes to indulging my you know my sexual energy this is true so that's why this is why i i've taken great strides to enable myself to only indulge during certain hours and if I can't find in those hours well then that's too damn bad I'm not always available I got stuff I gotta do throughout the day so if someone can't make that time window then guess what I'm not staying up till 11 o'clock to try to get some nookie it's not happening 
I'm not staying up all night trying to get some leg. It's not going to happen. I have a small window of time, and if I can't do it, well, then guess what? doesn't happen. That's it. To me, that's a way of not falling for the cold turkey, you know, where you're, like, craving it. And you're, it's like, give, it's leaving yourself the option open, but knowing that the option's not always going to be able to be fulfilled. To me, that's the cheat code when it comes to getting over something. Because then you realize, you're like, do I even like this? Do I even want to do this anymore? It's all about setting yourself up for success because you know yourself so well. If you don't know yourself well, you got to change that ASAP. This is why you're getting distracted because you don't, you're like a doctor who can't diagnose a problem and then is trying to treat it. You can't treat something you don't know what you're dealing with. It doesn't make sense. Again, that's working backwards. Why would you work backwards? Don't do that. It's all about focus and discipline. And this is, this is what I preach on the show. And why I preach it is not because I'm always great at it. It's because I want to hold myself accountable as well as share it with you so that you can improve. My friends, distraction can really damage your potential. It can damage your mental health too. But what I want you to know is distraction can be brief and I don't want you to beat yourself up if you've done it because we all have. It's time to stop thinking about the past and being upset about what you could have done, should have done, would have done, whatever. And instead say, you know what? I'm taking accountability. I took that L. I'm going to hold it. We're moving it forward. Because now I'm going to get this W. That's what you got to do. Can you get mad at yourself for the little routes you've taken off the main trail, but just get back on the main trail and do better next time. That's all you can do. Otherwise, you're going to resent yourself. And you wouldn't want to be on the same team as someone that you hate, would you? No, of course not. Stop self-sabotaging and let's start succeeding, shall we? My friends, distraction doesn't have to destroy you. If you are getting distracted, use that experience to your advantage. Say, you know what? I'm going to incorporate this into my art. Just look at Taylor Swift. That's what half her songs are about. And look how, look how popular and look how successful she is. Your distractions can be used to your advantage. Whether it's a romantic encounter, whether it's a video games, whether it's, I, I don't know what you, I don't know what you're distracted by. It could be your phone, social media, whatever it is. You could discuss it in your art. Let it come through in your content. Let it come through in your art. Let it come through in your job to help you push yourself even farther. It's never over. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So even if you misappropriate your energy, that does not mean that it cannot still be used towards your benefit. Just keep that in mind as well. That's not a pass to get distracted. It just means that if you do, it is not the end of the world and you do not need to beat yourself up over it because that will be more counterproductive than it will be helpful. My friends, remember this. It is a marathon, not a sprint. I want you to remember that. It can seem like a sprint, but that's how you get burned out. You need to think long term and you need to make sure that you can sustain what it is you're doing. Because if you can't, you need to adjust. Because you'll get flooded with distractions and you'll be vulnerable. When you're tired is when you're most vulnerable to distractions. And your armor just cannot help you. Because you're not willing to... You cannot resist the darts being thrown at you. It's hard to cover your weaknesses when you're, t when you're down, out, tired. Not wanting to... You know, you feel sad. Whatever it is. Just keep that in mind. My friends, distractions can be difficult. This is all true. But just learn to know yourself and you can then act accordingly. So as I said, if you don't know yourself this morning, you don't know where you're going, that's the first step. After that, you need to take direct purposeful action on how you're going to inhi inhibit those things from robbing you of opportunities, robbing you of your wealth. My friends... I hope this really got through to you this morning because look, I'm just as guilty as this as, as guilty of this as any other person here, but I want you to know 
I learned this the hard way and I would like for you to learn this the easy way. My friends, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless America. Remember, it is a marathon, not a sprint. And you need to learn to love yourself and learn more about yourself. Because even the worst distractions that we may have can be used to help us. But we need to learn to help prevent them from happening in the first place so that we cannot get taken off the path that will lead us to our birthright. Take care of yourselves. Peace.